In this video, we will explore the intricate anatomy of the abducens nerve, also known as cranial nerve 6. We will begin with an introduction to the abducens nerve, setting the stage for a comprehensive examination of its anatomy and function. The discussion will first detail the origin and course of the nerve, as well as its relationships with adjacent anatomical structures. We will then describe the terminal branches of the abducens nerve as it innervates the lateral rectus muscle and outline its various connections. Moving forward, we will delve into the essential role of the abducens nerve in orchestrating eye movement. A special segment will be dedicated to the clinical correlations of abducens nerve dysfunction, specifically focusing on the presentation and consequences of abducens nerve palsy. To conclude, we will encapsulate the key takeaways about the abducens nerve. The abducens nerve, also referred to as the sixth cranial nerve, plays a pivotal role in the motor function of the eye. This nerve is exclusively motor in nature, dedicated to controlling one specific action, the lateral movement of the eyeball. Such lateral movement is crucial for the coordination of both eyes in horizontal gaze, allowing us to track objects across our field of vision and maintain binocular focus. The abducens nerve achieves this by providing motor innovation to the lateral rectus muscle, the muscle responsible for pulling the eyeball outward, away from the midline of the face. However, the function of the abducens nerve is sometimes compromised, leading to what is known as lateral rectus palsy. This impairment results in the inability of the affected eye to move laterally. The abducens nerve has an apparent origin with precise neuroanatomical landmarks. It emerges at a well-defined region, the junction of the pons and the medulla oblongata, particularly near the pontomedullary junction on the anterior aspect of the brainstem. This location is anatomically significant, positioned above the pyramid of the medulla oblongata, which is a prominence on the anterior surface of the medulla. The nerve's emergence medial to the facial nerve is another crucial relationship that provides a reference for locating the abducens nerve during neurosurgical procedures or radiological assessments. The apparent origin of the abducens nerve is not just an anatomical point of interest, it bears clinical importance. Due to its emergence in this area, the nerve is vulnerable to pathologies that affect the lower pons or upper medulla, such as demyelinating diseases, brainstem strokes, or tumors. Its position also makes it susceptible to increased intracranial pressure, which can result in the nerve being stretched or compressed. The consequences of such pathologies at the apparent origin can lead to deficits in lateral gaze and diplopia, hallmarks of abducens nerve palsy. The actual origin of the abducens nerve is deeply rooted in the brainstem, specifically originating from the abducens nucleus. This nucleus is strategically positioned in the dorsal portion of the pons, nestled within a region referred to as the pontine tegmentum. Situated beneath the facial colliculus, which is a notable elevation on the floor of the fourth ventricle, the abducens nucleus holds a significant place in the brainstem's anatomy. The facial colliculus is formed by the internal looping of the facial nerve fibers around the abducens nucleus, creating a distinctive topographical relationship. This close proximity to the facial nerve is of considerable clinical relevance, as any lesion affecting this area could potentially impact both the abducens and facial nerves. Additionally, the abducens nucleus lies lateral to the medial longitudinal fasciculus, an important neural tract that coordinates eye movements and head turns. This relationship is critical for the coordination of conjugate horizontal gaze. When the abducens nerve activates the lateral rectus muscle for eye abduction, the medial longitudinal fasciculus helps coordinate the contralateral oculomotor nerve to move the other eye medially, ensuring synchronized movement of both eyes. The course of the abducens nerve within the posterior cranial fossa is a journey marked by several critical anatomical landmarks and relationships. After originating from the abducens nucleus in the pons, the nerve emerges at the pontomedullary junction, entering into the prepontine cistern, which is part of the subarachnoid space. This initial phase of its course is pivotal as the nerve navigates through an area filled with cerebrospinal fluid, providing a protective cushioning. As the abducens nerve extends forward, it passes beneath the anterior inferior cerebellar artery, an anatomical relationship that holds clinical importance. The proximity to this artery can pose a risk, as any vascular anomalies or aberrations in the artery's course can potentially impact the nerve. From this point, the nerve takes an anterosuperior course towards the petrous apex, a critical juncture in its path. This trajectory towards the petrous apex of the temporal bone is significant as it marks the nerve's transition towards a more vulnerable and confined space. 
the abducens nerve then encounters a crucial structural barrier, the dura mater. It pierces the dura mater near the lateral edge of the clivus, just inferior to the posterior clinoid process. This penetration is a critical transition from a relatively protected course to one where the nerve becomes more susceptible to external pressures and injuries. Upon penetrating the dura mater, the nerve is encased within a fibrous sheath, marking its entry into the Dorello canal. This canal is a narrow passageway that secures the nerve's path as it approaches the cavernous sinus. The positioning of the nerve within the Dorello canal is particularly noteworthy, as it makes the abducens nerve prone to stretching or compression, especially in cases of increased intracranial pressure or skull-based trauma. Within the cavernous sinus, the course of the abducens nerve is both complex and clinically significant due to its unique positioning and the potential implications of its anatomical relationships. After navigating through the Dorello's canal, the abducens nerve enters the cavernous sinus at the base of the brain. In the cavernous sinus, the abducens nerve assumes a distinctive position, situated infralaterally to the internal carotid artery. This relationship is of particular importance as it places the nerve in close proximity to a major blood vessel, making it susceptible to vascular pathologies such as carotid artery aneurysms or arteriovenous malformations. Additionally, the nerve is located medial to the lateral wall of the sinus. This medial position is unique among the cranial nerves that traverse the cavernous sinus, as most others, including the oculomotor nerve, the trochlear nerve, and the ophthalmic and maxillary branches of the trigeminal nerve, are embedded in the lateral wall. The abducens nerve's course through the substance of the sinus exposes it to potential injury or compression from lesions within or adjacent to the cavernous sinus, such as tumors, inflammatory conditions, or thrombosis. Moreover, the abducens nerve is positioned below the oculomotor nerve within the cavernous sinus. This stratification is relevant in the context of orbital apex syndromes or cavernous sinus pathologies, where the clinical presentation can help differentiate which nerves are affected based on their anatomical locations. After its journey through the cavernous sinus, the nerve proceeds to enter the orbit, an entry it achieves via the superior orbital fissure. This fissure is a significant anatomical gateway, situated between the greater and lesser wings of the sphenoid bone, allowing the passage of not only the abducens nerve but also other crucial structures such as the oculomotor, trochlear nerves, the ophthalmic branch of the trigeminal nerve, and the ophthalmic vein. Upon its entry into the orbit, the abducens nerve navigates through the common tendinous ring, also known as the annulus of sin. The nerve's passage through this ring is a pivotal moment in its course, directing it towards its final destination, the lateral rectus muscle. Uniquely, the abducens nerve is characterized as the most inferior nerve traversing the tendinous ring. The terminal branches of the abducens nerve play a crucial role in its primary function of innervating the lateral rectus muscle. Typically, the abducens nerve divides into four to five branches. This branching occurs as the nerve approaches its target. These branches ensure widespread and effective distribution of motor fibers, allowing for uniform and coordinated contraction of the muscle. The entry point of these branches into the lateral rectus muscle is characteristically on its posterior surface, slightly away from the muscle's origin. This specific entry point is strategically positioned to optimize the effectiveness of nerve impulses in generating muscle contractions. The abducens nerve, primarily known for its motor function in controlling the lateral rectus muscle of the eye, also has a notable connection with the sympathetic nervous system. This connection is established through the receipt of sympathetic fibers from the internal carotid plexus. These sympathetic fibers join the abducens nerve along its course, typically after the nerve exits the brainstem and as it travels through the cavernous sinus. This nerve serves a critical and singular function in the realm of ocular motor control, it facilitates the lateral movement of the eyeball, a motion termed abduction. This specific action is paramount for the coordination and range of horizontal eye movements, which are essential for activities like reading, tracking moving objects, and maintaining a broad field of vision. However, the functionality of the abducens nerve is crucial not just for its normal operation but also in the context of its potential compromise, leading to a condition known as abducens nerve palsy. This condition ranks among the more commonly encountered cranial nerve palsies and presents with distinct clinical manifestations. One of the primary symptoms is the inability to abduct the affected eye. In this scenario, the lateral rectus muscle, innervated by the abducens nerve, fails to contract properly, hindering the eye's outward movement. 
Another manifestation of abducens nerve palsy is esotropia, where the affected eye turns inward due to unopposed action by the medial rectus muscle. This misalignment not only disrupts binocular vision but also often leads to horizontal diplopia or double vision. The patient perceives two side-by-side -side images due to the lack of coordination between the two eyes. This symptom is most pronounced when attempting to look sideways. Moreover, patients with abducens nerve palsy may adopt a compensatory head-turning movement towards the side of the affected eye. This involuntary adjustment is a coping mechanism to align the eyes to reduce diplopia and improve visual focus. In conclusion, the abducens nerve, or cranial nerve 6, holds a specialized and essential role in the realm of ocular motility. It is primarily dedicated to the motor function of the lateral rectus muscle, which facilitates the lateral movement, or abduction, of the eyeball. This function is critical not only for the basic mechanism of eye movement but also for more complex processes like tracking moving objects and maintaining binocular vision, essential for depth perception. The nerve's origin from the abducens nucleus in the dorsal pons marks the beginning of its vulnerable course. It navigates through the posterior cranial fossa, where it is susceptible to various pathologies due to its proximity to major blood vessels and other cranial nerves. The journey continues through the cavernous sinus, a region fraught with potential complications due to the nerve's close association with the internal carotid artery and other vital structures. Eventually, the abducens nerve enters the orbit via the superior orbital fissure, culminating its path by innervating the lateral rectus muscle. Clinically, impairment of the abducens nerve, known as abducens nerve palsy, manifests with notable symptoms such as the inability to abduct the affected eye, leading to esotropia, where the eye turns inward, and horizontal diplopia, commonly known as double vision. Patients may adopt a compensatory head posture to mitigate double vision. As one of the most commonly affected cranial nerves in neuropathies, the abducens nerve's function is a pivotal consideration in the diagnosis and treatment of ocular motor disorders.